Hey friends, Ari Koenuma here. Thanks for tuning in and welcome to my Deep Thoughts Thursday. Well, today I'm going to start with a big announcement and I'm really, really excited to announce to you that my original recorded music catalog is coming to you um, via the whatever the streaming services that you have. So I have two different acts. Uh, I have one, Minasia, which is uh, my collaboration with my uh, single partner, Bob Yang. And then uh, my solo project, which is Aristotle's Hope. I have a total of 18 pieces of music that is, I'm releasing initially. These are all only available previously on Bandcamp and also to my Patreons. But now they are going to be available to wherever you stream your music. I'm going to leave the links to some of the major ones like Apple and uh, Spotify down in the description. So I would really love it if you could check it out. I am also here to tell you that this is actually a sponsored video. Uh, it's sponsored by my distribution service, which is DistroKid. And DistroKid is the means in which I'm able to bring my music to you through the streaming services. Um, I've learned about DistroKid originally because one of my role models, uh, Derek Cybers, uh, recommended DistroKid as a great uh, service for independent musicians. and uh, I. Um, well, I signed up a while ago, but uh, other sort of life things got in the way and I never really quite got around to releasing my music until very recently. So I sat down and to release my music and I could not believe how easy it was. Really the hardest part was tracking down some uh, image files of my old solo album that I haven't really uh, needed in a while. <laughs> it was very easy, just a matter of filling out a few forms and upload the originals and then there you go, my music is traveling through the cyberspace around the world to reach whoever uh, might be interested in my music and that is an amazing thing. They just have a flat fee for annual and they don't really charge on per song basis or uh, it's it's not even like the per song it's like it's not even renewed or anything like that their competitors have other such terms uh, DistroKid you just sign up and then you become a member or customer of DistroKid and from there the creative control is completely yours they're not you're, you're not being taxed so you ha don't have to pay to be creative like if you're a prolific person and you have a long catalog that's the same as you know somebody like me who has you know a, a dozen or so re songs that I, I need to release, right? Um, I, I see that as very much sort of a creative, artistic-centric business or approach to it. They're they they're not doing this to maximize profits at all costs. They're kind of saying yes. You know, we are a valid business, of course we need to make profits and we need to, to thrive as a business to keep supporting you, but we are here to support you. It really is amazing to have service like DistroKid around to support the independent music industry. Musicians, I know you might hear a lot of complainings about like how you know streaming services don't pay musicians very well and and this and that and you know it's really easy to complain about the current time and how uh, difficult or challenging it might be but if you ask me I think this is a great time to be an independent musician that a guy like me who's you know making the music that his heart pleases um, in his bedroom can still release the music through services like DistroKid and the, it's a level playing field, right? I'm not part of the major label, I'm, I don't have hundreds of thousands of dollars of advertising budget, but yet my song is just another song in the extended catalog right along the grades like Led Zeppelin and Jimi Hendrix and Beatles and U2 and those guys. I think that's amazing. So this being a deep thoughts video, I'm gonna go quite macro on you, so just bear with me, right? So, in my mind, I feel that we the human beings are at a very sort of a transitional period in our history in that all along until about a few decades ago, uh, our sort of species or our society was very much focused on making sure that we physically survive. And by physically survive, you know, just making sure that everybody has the basic needs like food, shelter, clothing, you know, things like that. and 
we had to prioritize our physical survival above all else. And we created systems, societies, cultures, customs, really to help maximize that. Um, in Japan, uh, there's a saying, like, for example, like if you are um, uh, a nail that sticks out, you get hit, right? So that is a, sort of a maxim for saying that, you know, you better not stick out and you better really belong with everybody else and conform to the, the norms. And that is a saying, again, to sort of warn people of the consequences of sticking out or being different. and. That, that is very much focused on, yeah, you want to sort of heed that kind of advice so that you, you're, you can survive and you can fit in, right? And of course, I take issues with the message of that saying now, but that's a luxury that I have now that I, ha I can assume that my basic needs are being met. In the last few decades, some of the more developed countries were starting to move beyond the point where we no longer have to be primarily concerned with saying that, yeah, oh, I don't know if I'm going to survive tomorrow or a month from now or a year from now, or I need to make sure that, uh, yeah, I can do everything I can to have a to have a job and to have a house and to have a uh, you know food on the table kind of thing where we move beyond that point and to say lucky for us we, we can say well you know I, when I th think about my life I'm not concerned about having food on the table we have infrastructure in place we have uh, people in different jobs and roles that work right uh, it, of course that system is in challenge right now in the global pandemic but we have great infrastructure and our sort of collective survival is more or less a guaranteed or assumed uh, proposition. Now, I'm not saying that that's true for everybody, even in the developed societies, I'm not saying that at all. There are always, uh, and then uh, there are always exceptions or, or people who don't fit that norm and of course there are whole countries and uh, cultures and, and, and groups of people who don't where well, that's not true at all so I'm not saying that we are everybody's there or anything like that but in those of us who live in you know the first world that's not a good term either but develop more developed countries can go about our life assuming that our physical survival is we can kind of, kind of count on that right but what we're learning once our physical survival is assured is that actually it's not quite enough that we preserve our bodies. It's also just as important that we feed our mind and that uh, our minds are healthy. Because once you find out that yes, our body is healthy and functioning but our mind is not, actually we still don't survive in that we could be healthy physically but mentally could be so sick that we might lose the will to live and it could uh, trigger you know terrible things like you know killing oneself when the mind is sick and if you sort of I, I feel that the pendulum has swung so far in the uh, one direction of assuring that everybody physically survives but without the regard as much to the, our mental uh, survival our feeding of our minds and what's inside our bodies uh, we're learning, we're still learning about that. We're learning the importance of doing that, we're still learning how to do that and there are still lots of processes and systems and cultures and customs that still need to be tweaked and developed to assure that we are all of sound mind and that uh, you know, mind and body together we can truly survive and thrive. So in my opinion, I think it's a sign of a highly advanced society where uh, one of the main key things that feed our mind, arts and creative endeavors, are well supported that uh, sort of the infrastructure or organizations around it are so organized in, in that we can call that a valid industry. This is not true everywhere in the world. Uh, yeah, services like DistroKid, I mean, I don't know, maybe it exists in Japan by now. I have not heard of it. I'm not that in touch with my home country's music industry, but 
uh, you know, in English speaking countries, we are at a luxury where the arts are established industry, people are paid, people are making businesses, people are making a living uh, supporting the creators and artists so that we the artists and creators can do what we do and it's not so much that like what I do and what I what I create has that much value maybe it does maybe it doesn't I, it's not up to me to decide that I'm just an artist and creator and I create what I what pleases me right but still it's really important for us artists and creators to be able to do what we do and even if you're not like a full-time or serious person you know all of us we're all born creative and us doing creative things really sort of feeds our mind, feeds our soul and it leads to the betterment, it leads to the overall better health of our being. So there is value in people being creative, people being artsy and doing those sort of things even if the output doesn't happen to have wide appeal or has commercial appeal just us doing these things so sort those of, you know make it visible to everybody all around that yeah you know I can do those things too I can be creative I can be artistic I can make music and share it with people around the world right that is an empowering thought and that leads to us, all of us being healthier and happier and thriving. So if you're a fan of music, if you're a fan and supporters of independent music, I thank you first of all for supporting those of us who are independent musicians. I appreciate your interest when you stream our music through the streaming services, just remember that there are services like DistroKid that it kind of plays a role in bringing that to us and it's these businesses that empower that and enable the independent music as a valid and thriving industry. And if you are a musician, my suggestion to you is let us be grateful that we have a valid industry, established industry around us that enable us, empower us to do what it is that we want to do. So let us use services like DistroKid and go forth and create our art and spread them, right? And do it to the best of our abilities. So as the sponsor of this video, DistroKid kindly provided me with a link with a uh, discount code built in so that if you are a musician and interested in releasing your own music to streaming services, you can use that and get a little bit of money off from their already really rather low annual uh, membership fee. So I'll put that in the description. And for those of you who are not familiar with my music, I am going to uh, leave you with sort of the snippet from one of my original tunes uh, after this. I hope that uh, you go find it and listen to it and enjoy it. Okay? Thanks again for tuning in. I really, really appreciate it. I'll see you next time.